Resident Evil is obviously filled with a ton of different monsters that are usually trying to kill you, but certain ones actually have pretty sad and unfortunate backstories. Today in Game Rings here are the 7 most unfortunate Resident Evil monsters. And just a quick disclaimer before we get into it, there will be a lot of spoiler talk here arranging the entire Resident Evil series, so definitely watch at your own risk. Starting off with number 7, we have Nosferatu or Alexander Ashford. Ashford was a pretty like okay scientist. He did discover the human gene that regulated intelligence, but was still nowhere near as smart or successful as his father. In an attempt to increase his family reputation, he decided to use his knowledge of genetic engineering to use the DNA of the family matriarch to create a clone. The experiment actually produced twins, two clones, that he named Alfred and Alexia. Alexia was born with a way superior intellect to Alfred's. Even though Alfred was still very smart, Alexia became chief senior researcher at Umbrella at only 10 years old. Not wanting anyone to find out where his children actually came from, Alexander hid his records in a secret room. Years later, Alfred made his way into this room and found the records. Reading them revealed that he was an unplanned child. Being pretty upset that his father didn't make him as smart as or smarter than his sister Alexia, Alfred trapped and imprisoned his father and used him as a test subject to test Alexia's T. Veronica virus. After a few months, he had mutated into the monster known as Nosferatu and was chained up in a room by his children, left alone to die. He eventually escaped and was later killed by Claire Redfield. Alexander's pursuit of knowledge is what eventually led to his death. His children, not happy with how they were born, ultimately killed him off tortured and tossed away by her children damn that's rough moving on to number six for spire is one of the many members of stars that we barely got to meet and see in action because by the time alpha team arrives at the spencer mansion most members of bravo team are already dead besides a few that you do run into even if only for a second while you do kind of run into kenneth right at the beginning of the game his head is being munched on by the first zombie that you actually run into Forrest is the first Bravo team member that you actually see and actually interact with, even though when you run into him, he's already dead. He unfortunately discovered how dangerous those zombie crows are firsthand, and by the time you find him, he's already dead, eventually turning into a zombie, which you then have to kill. And it's just super unfortunate and sad that he died so suddenly and out of nowhere, where he probably had no idea what was going on. And he's the first zombie that you kill that you like actually know like before they were a zombie which makes it even more sad there's also the one dangerous zombie mode that was added into the resident evil 1 remake for gamecube where forest spire is actually walking around the mansion with grenades strapped to his chest and if you attack him he explodes and he kills you and he could pop up anywhere and you have to pretty much run around him seeing that you can't kill him without dying next up at number five we have william birkin who you kind of can't feel bad for seeing that a lot of what happened to him he kind of brought upon himself because he was kind of shitty first off he was like kind of boys with albert wesker which right away isn't a good sign he was a pretty important umbrella scientist and the creator of the g virus and after learning that umbrella had no intention of giving him an executive position he began to sabotage umbrella from the inside destroying some facilities and beginning to make a deal with the u.s government who were going to buy his creations umbrella catching wind of this decided to send a special task force out to kill Birkin and destroy the G virus. He followed that team into the sewers, killing most of them and then destroyed any G and T virus samples he could get his hands on. During this, the rats in the sewer system were infected with the T virus and infected the rest of Raccoon City. So it's Birkin that's actually responsible for the outbreak. With most of Birkin gone and the monster having taken over at this point, he begins to search for his daughter Sherry so he could pass on the infection to her to reproduce it. Eventually, of course, he did escape Raccoon City on a train that did explode and kill him. Birkin flew a little close to the sun and it was his downfall. And not only did he doom himself because of his selfishness, but he also doomed his family and all of Raccoon City. Next up at number four, this one is weird only because for the majority of Resident Evil 7, the bakers are absolutely terrifying and disgusting and gross and you spend the whole game running from them and fighting them. Only to get to the end of the game to find out that they're actually not bad people at all and are instead being controlled by Evelyn the entire time, except Lucas who seems like is just straight up a fucked up bad dude. 
But yeah, later on in the game, when Ethan is stuck in the mold, he has a vision where Jack Baker is talking to him, and it's here that he tells Ethan that him and his family aren't actually bad, and that they're under the control of Evelyn, and he asks Ethan to free them. It was actually Jack that found Evelyn on the crash tanker and took her into his home, which led to her taking control of the family because that's really all she wanted was a family. It wasn't until being taken over by her that he started running around, cutting dudes' heads in half with shovels. Even good people can be bad when a scary monster girl is mind controlling you. And at number three, this one seems pretty obvious, but like, can we talk about how unfortunate all the zombies in Resident Evil are? I mean, think about it. You're a Raccoon City resident, minding your own business, going about your daily routine, then all of a sudden, boom, the T-Virus outbreak hits, and all of a sudden you're a zombie, or you're getting eaten by a zombie. The citizens of Raccoon City are the real victims here. Not Claire, not Leon, not Chris, not Jill. No, it's the people that are defenseless and spend their life just munching on dudes now. Honestly, I'm pretty sure just being a zombie in general just doesn't feel all that good. Let's have a moment of silence for all those innocent people that are now literally falling apart and eating other people. And coming in at number two, next up we have a character that I don't think anyone actually really gives a shit about, but what they go through is super unfortunate and horrible. Steve Burnside from Code Veronica, you know the dude that looks like a knockoff shitty Leon Kennedy, was Claire's partner in crime for most of that game. Steve and his father were both prisoners on Rockford Island when the outbreak happens, getting separated during it. For most of the game, Steve and Claire run into each other and help each other out while Steve is trying to find his father and escape. At one point, both Steve and Claire fall off a walkway that causes Claire to be trapped by rubble, and Steve's father, now infected with the T-Virus and having turned into a zombie, starts to go after Claire. It's here that Steve, after freezing up for a bit at the sight of his father becoming a zombie, shoots and kills him just as he's about to bite Claire, which you can imagine is pretty hard to do, killing your dad, even if technically your dad is already dead, I'm sure it doesn't make it any easier. Unfortunately, that's not the only tragic thing to happen to Steve, he does have a pretty unfortunate end as well. After both Steve and Claire are captured by Alexia, Steve is injected with the T-Veronica virus, which causes him to mutate into a big, grotesque, hulking monster. After trying to kill Claire with his giant axe that he has out of nowhere, she escapes into a prison cell to get away, only to be attacked and grabbed by Alexia's tentacle. It's here that Steve regains his consciousness for just a second and attacks Alexia instead, saving Claire yet again. After being critically wounded, he begins to turn back into his normal self, and right before dying, he tells Claire that he loves her. Steve was just a 17-year-old kid that was caught in the middle of this giant mess, and unfortunately, he paid the price for it. And finally, at number one, this one is probably one of the more mess up ones on this list. If you've played the Resident Evil 1 GameCube remake or the HD remake on newer consoles and PC, I'm sure you remember Lisa Trevor. She is that creepy monster that walks around with the shackles that you can find in the cabin outside of the Spencer Mansion. In 1967, 31 years before stars began their investigation into the Arclay Mountains, Lisa was abducted by Umbrella and was used as a test subject for years. Her father, George Trevor, is actually the one responsible responsible for building the Spencer Mansion for Oswell E. Spencer. After its completion, George and his family were invited to the mansion to celebrate it. Lisa and her mother Jessica had left for the trip to the mansion early, with George staying behind to work. Upon arriving at the mansion, Spencer had the two of them detained and began using them as test subjects. Eventually, Lisa's mother was killed and Lisa was left on her own. Umbrella had used her as a test subject for 18 years before she began to regain some of her consciousness and became too much of a danger to the staff to keep around. She had become so mutated from all the experiments that the last virus they injected into her was actually killed off because of how toxic her body was. After killing three scientists, it was decided that she had to be killed and disposed of. And after being killed, her body was watched for three days to make sure that she was actually dead and then her body was transported to a cabin that was still on the mansion grounds. Here, she resurrected and lived for three years until the T-Virus outbreak hit and stars had arrived at the Spencer Mansion. Stuck underneath the rubble during the explosion of the Spencer Mansion, it is assumed that she died. Long story short, she had the worst bring your daughter to work day. And those are seven of the most unfortunate Resident Evil monsters, but we want to hear from you, so meet us down in the comments and let us know what you think. Which one of these is the most sad story, and are there any other Resident Evil characters, enemies, bosses, anything that we may have missed that you think belongs on this list? And as I'm sure you already know, hitting the like button really helps us out. And if you're new here, subscribing is a good idea because we put out videos like this every single day. As always, thank you for watching. We really appreciate it, and we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.